So with the A6 board from this HP 3400A looking bad, with potentially the chopper itself being the problem, which is not something which is easy to fix, it may be possible, but it's not likely to ever work quite right ever again. I designed a new board. In fact, I've got a couple of things in here. I'll, I'll talk about all these. I approached my sponsor, PCB Bay, after I designed a board. They're sponsoring this video, so thank you much PCB Bay once again. And I've designed this board to replace the A6 board. Now, this is based on the original HP board. Got the circuit diagrams and stuff for the original version, which is like a later v revision of this board of the A6. And I've modernised it slightly. I've put some newer components on there. Got some like service mount resistors and stuff like that, service mount transistors. But I've still kept some of the original parts as they were, like the original uh, chopper op amp here, for example. That's the original one. I've still got large capacitors. They may end up being changed to something smaller later on. Give you a close look at the balls. You know what I'm actually talking about. Now this isn't tested. I've done nothing with it. As far as prototype, I've just basically updated the original version a little bit and you know put my little spin on it and put things where I think they should be. The original one's got like this op amp over here, I think have something like that anyway. It's got a different layout. So I laid it out where I thought things should probably be on the board. If this works, I may make this available to other people. Probably make it available on PCYS website and their projects page and my page on there. I'll go have a page of my projects. Thanks a lot PCYS for sponsoring the video and providing these balls to me at no cost. Make sure full disclaimers all gone in there. Now the boards I've got are these things. I'll be doing a video on these as well later on. Simple boards, but we'll get to that. So I need to populate the service mount parts first just to get those out of the way because I think that's going to be a bit to do. Now I did actually originally put a, a stencil on my order piece of by somehow in the process of me ordering them and, and what have you, I had missed it off. So I never actually got it. I didn't actually pay for that in the end, so it just didn't happen. All the service mount parts have to be laid up by hand, which is a bit of a pain. I did want stencil. At least for one side. This side I could have probably done by hand easy enough, but this side's a bit more on it, so I was going to stencil it, but uh, never mind. Manually it is. So we'll do the service mount parts on both sides. I think I'll do the other side first, get these resistors and stuff done, get those populated in. It's going to take a while, so I will probably do a bit of editing magic here or something, and I don't think you want to watch me assembling a board, do you? Do you? Do you want me to sit there watching? You probably don't want to sit with me. No. no. I shall do this side and I shall come back. How's that? So there we go, it's all the SND parts installed. That's one side. And that's the other side. I haven't cleaned the flux off yet. I'm going to leave it on there until I finish doing the rest of the assembly. And I'll clean it off afterwards. The idea is you can actually just look at the part numbering on the board and assembling it from the board that much in the way of instruction. That's the plan. Now because do all the through hole stuff. So there you go, it's the build basically done. I've still got to plug that chip in there yet, that op amp. I'm not doing that yet until I do some basic checks on to make sure the board's not horrendously wrong. Here's going to my power supply, which I'm going to inject 17 volts into. Half an amp is what I'm going to use. I'm just going to do a quick measurement on a couple of things and just see if things look like they're kind of okay. And then I'll do a negative 17 volt supply as well. In fact, I need to make sure I get these correct. Oh, that, is that a negative 17 or plus 17? That is a negative 17 volt supply. So these go the other way around. Could you have thought of that? Could be a disaster before I even started. Let's try it. It's drawing 10 milliamps, that's so not looking horrendous so far. Let's get a ground point. There's be round on there. And let's measure that. Nothing. That. Minus 17, indeed. So we've got these regulators. There we go. Getting minus 6 volts off this one. Well, it's supposed to be 6.2. So, yeah, we're getting a negative supply. That's a good start. Which should be coming over to this op amp here, I think. Here we go. Here it is. And I think it comes over to this one as well. Yep, there it is there. Just gonna double check these pins, make sure they're correct, then I'll do the positive supply. Now it's supposed to be a plus 77 volt supply on pin four. I was just gonna leave it on 17, because that should be enough to tell us what's going on. Do I have a supply? Yes, 5.8. Now it's going through some big resistors, so it's actually cranked us up. I've got almost no current draw. It's got a 31 volts. Which pins are supposed to go to? There you go, there it is there. 5.8. So that's there, and that one there is it. Yep, there we go. So supplies look okay. Slightly sagged down. I mean, this is probably using Zeners. You're not perfect. It's 0.2 volts. Does it matter? Probably not. It does have nulling on here. So I think I'm okay to put the chip in and actually try putting it into the unit and see if it works. So I've installed the chip. Now, these chips I picked up, I think they are fake. It says 7650 on it. It says ICL on the front. Underneath, it says Philips. Anyway... <laughs> I'll try it anyway. You never know, it might be a compatible part. If it's a compatible part, that's fine. I don't think it's that critical. 
I do have some 1052s, which I think might be real. So if this doesn't work, I'll put a 1052 in instead. Anyway, we'll try it with this. See what happens. Right, let's turn this thing on, see what happens. Do we get smoke? It's pulling 8 watts. So nothing actually happened to the needle. It's just sitting there. No output at all. Let's put some kind of noise into it. Should be getting something. We're getting nothing. Right. Let's change that chip out. Right, I'll swap the chip out. This is the fake one, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's fake. It's now got a 1052 in there instead. Let's we'll see if this changes anything. Still got the lights range. Still in 8 watts. And we're still getting nothing. No reverse adjustments on here, or I've messed something up. Probably messed something up. So it's a considerable amount of time later now, and I've been trying to diagnose why this pool is not working quite right. Now I did find a couple of problems. The minus, I think it's a minus six volt supply. No, sorry, it's a plus six volt supply. The resistors were um, just too big. I don't know. I had to drop the values down quite a bit from what was in the original design notes from HP. Don't know why that is. I changed them. It could have been something else going on at the same time though, so it could be it's causing a problem with another fault I found on the board which was causing a problem. So I'm not quite sure, I might revisit that and just make sure, but there were 22k resistors, I dropped them down to 3.9. They could probably go higher actually, it seems to be drawing a fair bit of power, so it probably could go higher. But anyway, I also found a problem with the footprint for the op amp over here. Um, I made a mistake on the circuit diagram. I tied two of these lines, got a resistor there, R625 and R621. I tied both of those to the minus 6 volt rail. That was wrong, it's supposed to go to the ground. So I've made some little bodges here to fix that, just minor little things. Cut the track there, bridged it across the ground, and just shifted that resistor across onto the ground pad over that side. Okay, so minor things there. Still not working though. So I've been playing with this and trying to figure it out. And one half thing I've been able to do at least is these fake ICL7650 chips I've got. It does actually work. I also got the LT1052CN here as well, which is uh, also a trusted part. That's from a reputable supplier, so that one's a good part. And they both work the same way, so not worried about that. What I want to do now is do some reverse engineering, as it were, of the circuit to figure out some things to try and understand what's going on about why it's not working properly. So basically what's happening is it's not controlling the upper voltage correctly. It's just swinging wildly. So I think the op amp here, the final op amp, which is when I with wired before. Um, I think that's working correctly. I'm just going to verify that now and just do some testing to see what input voltages it takes to get a certain output voltage. So I've got that and I can record that as a troubleshooting note as well maybe. But it seems to be the main issue is around the chopper op amp. That seems a bit which is giving all the trouble. It's just sitting at negative voltage. Yeah, it's supposed to be negative voltage but it's, it's pegging it and I don't know why it's doing that yet. It seems like it's a control loop problem or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to work backwards from the op amp which I believe is okay verify those voltages controlled up and properly then at least I know that's definitely not the problem and I can concentrate before that at least I also have some data about what the voltage is going to up and bar for other testing and stuff like that so I haven't tried this yet I've got it hooked up I've got the PDVS2 mini here I'm going to use this to inject the voltage we're going to be doing really low voltages so I'm not quite sure what voltage is going to be doing but it's going to be low we might do millivolts first see what happens this is hooked up to the output All right so the bottom is hooked up to the output which is the output from this op amp here. The PDVS2 Mini will be injecting a negative voltage into the op amp at the end of the filter circuit. I don't have a circuit diagram in front of me. Maybe I'll do an overlay or something, but the output from this chopper goes through a filter network and also taps off to go feedback to the thermocouples. And it goes through the filter network, then it goes to this op amp. So I'm not injecting at the end of that filter network. So I'm basically only testing this op amp here to verify that. I've got my power supply set at 5.8 volts. 6.2 volts is what the ball runs at, but when I clamp this up to 6.2, obviously the, the zeners are clamping and they're dragging the current right up and getting hot. So, obviously, I don't want to be doing that. You know, fight, power supply is fighting the zeners, that's not really point, no, there's no point in that. So, 5.8 volts is enough to stop the zeners from clamping on and it should be enough to run the board. I've got my power supply set up as serial mode, so I've, I've got three wires connected to it, so it's got an internal link between the positive nigger on here, so it's doing basically a plus and minus supply is running as now. Let's do some testing, see what happens. Basically, I find what 0.1 volts and 1 volts are 
on injected voltages from the PDV is too many, and that'll tell me what those should be on the gain. I mean, you can work it out anyway from the resistors, I suppose, and a op amp, but I actually wanted to see what's physically doing. Circuit should now be powered up. Let's put some voltage in. And it is controlling. So 10 millivolts is doing about minus 40. Okay. So let's go up by 10s in. Too much. So about 0.1. Or thereabouts. There we go, 0.1. Seems to be 19 millivolts DC going into the op amp. It's generating 0.1 volt. Let's make a note of that. Right, let's keep going up. If you want 1 volt, to find out what the full scale reading will be. Oh, look at that, 1 volt. 0 0.189, 0 0.189 volts at the filter input. So that is negative 0.189 because I've got it reverse wired backwards, right? And that's how it works. So negative output from the chopper op amp to the op amp because it's inverting. Just go make a note of that. So I think about it, I'm going to call it both 189. This is also just over five times. So my MB of system value is also slightly off from ideal. So I think it might be a five times multiplier anyway. So yeah, 189, I'm getting here 18.9 millivolts, I should say, to get. 0.1. So if I say this is exactly right, this voltage, I think this prime is actually pretty close, I don't actually remember, but I think it's pretty close. So I'm going to call it 18.9 millivolts and 189 millivolts. So we know that that op amp is definitely working correctly, that is amplifying as it should, nothing wrong with that one, that part of the circuit seems right. Now I know what voltage should be coming out the back of the filter, also very handy. What I do know is that what's coming out from the chopper op amp is a lot more than the uh, 189 millivolts we're seeing here. So I just took a second there to work out what the actual amplifier gain is on this thing based on the resistor values. The original resistor pair is a 42.2 and a 10K, which works out as a 5.22 multiplier. Multiplier 5.22. There you go. And I've used a 43K and a 10K, which gives me a multiplier 5.3. So it's very slightly higher gain. It shouldn't actually matter because it's still tunable anyway, it's adjustable. So that's slight improvement and gain. Yeah, so inject 20 millivolts you should get out about 100 millivolts or so. In my case when I'm doing that 0.018 or 19 or whatever it was injecting that voltage there if you're injecting 0.2 volts so 200 millivolts you should get out 1.04 volts with the standard resistors or just around, I think slightly over that. I'm getting 1.06 so I'm basically doing 20 millivolts more with my resistor set on this op amp in theory, based on the values. It's negligible amount, really, and it should be fine. But anyway, that's not the problem I've got. Something else is going on here. I'm going to do some more testing. I've hooked up again now. I'm going to be doing, hopefully, a test of the chopper op amp, which I've now installed. When I was doing a previous test, I didn't have the chip installed, so I wouldn't be back feeding it. Now, I'm going to be injecting DC, which is what would come from the thermocouple. Right, this is simulating the thermocouple. So this is going to be very low voltages. I'm going to try one millivolt first again. I'm checking... The measurement here is on the filter point, which is where I was injecting the voltage last time. So the, uh, first I was checking the f second stage, now I'm checking the first stage, think of it that way. So at the filter point here is where I'm checking, which is after the filters, so it should be a smooth voltage there from the chopper, which should give me a reasonable representation. So the voltage you see here should match what we injected last time at some point. Okay, let's turn the power on. So we're nothing going in, we're getting negative 3. And changing the voltage going in isn't changing anything. No response. That's interesting. Could it be polarity? Let's change polarity. I don't think it is polarity. I think I've got it right around. But we'll do it anyway. Might give us a clue. Ah, look. Changing polarity did flip it. So this looks incredibly sensitive because it's based on a thermocouple, don't forget. Alright, so let's go here. I'd like to find out what voltage makes it settle at zero volt. It seems to just be toggling around. There you go, toggling. Yep. 500 microvolts. It's just flipping one way to the other. 
because there is no actual feedback on it, it requires on the feedback path fully through so there is no actual feedback from the output but it is going in both polarities that is something at least I'm trying to find a point if I can get it to actually sit at zero volts be nice to know what that is more than that less than that okay hmm tricky one really small voltages there okay now I've seen these results I've got a bit of an understanding here that made me think of something because I was assuming because positive this is thermocouple here so this is the old circuit diagram this is the original version but this is you know the original board that was in the HP 3400 so ignore all this bit think about this bit alright so this is the thermocouple pack and the positive side of the thermocouple comes into the input right which is exactly the same as this no difference there instead of having a neon chopper it's using the chopper amp instead so the negative side of that thermocouple goes to the negative side of this thermocouple so they're opposite each other and that comes across and feeds back into the output which has got a negative bias it's got minus 17 volts up here bias which would be the same as this thing kind of all right so it's fed from negative side so this is a negative supply which means negative going to the positive means this is more negative and this then becomes less negative so these two should balance out right these two thermocouples so they equalize depending on what the output voltage is so as the output voltage increase it compensates for the thermocouple difference so these two then become equal which then gives you a scaled reading on the meter over here right that's the same functionality so that means this will be a negative rail not a positive rail it's very interesting because the op amp wiring is set up as non-inverting so it will always definitely be a lower output which is what I'm expecting so yes that's all correct that makes sense that makes sense so that's all fine so the op amp is working the other op amp is working so why doesn't the circuit work hmm you've got these three trimmers on here I've already adjusted this one here this is the nulling of this op amp here so basically what you do is you short the filter have to take the chip out if you want but you don't, don't have to um, short the filter to the ground that makes that zero volt input to that op amp and then you adjust the null for less than two millivolts output on the output pin and that's how you null that op amp is that, that trimmer there these two trimmers here I haven't set yet I've got them set about halfway point roughly halfway I've tried adjusting them obviously trying to troubleshoot this thing and I haven't actually had any success with it changing so I could screw them all the way in all the way up you know fully extremes and it doesn't change anything so something is not right here I'm thinking it's probably something to do with a feedback path because the actual op amps are working Another thing I should explain, I've also tried eliminating the external oscillator for this op amp. So this chopper here, so that has an internal oscillator and an external oscillator option. So this board, the original design from HP, has the external oscillator set up, which is what I did. I replicated that, right, use these parts here and you know, all the stuff on the back here, and it was working. But I wanted to rule that out as a problem as being, you know, some issue there with maybe it's been balanced, the clock wasn't quite working right or something like that. So I actually disabled the chopper, which is why I've got this transistor here shifted off. I've got this track here cut, and that bridged across, because that is actually the rail, power supply rail. That pin there is the one that tells it whether to use internal or external oscillator. So that's why I had to isolate that pin. Floating it's fine, because apparently it's got an internal pull-up. I just had to jump a lap with a wire to make sure the power supply gets up to here, from down here, right? I should have maybe designed the circuit traces a little bit differently there. Going to the chopper's internal oscillator didn't change anything. It wasn't that was the problem. I, so I basically eliminated the oscillator section, which is a big chunk of the circuit, actually. That chopper is definitely working. Op amp there is definitely working. So, yeah. Um, maybe it's a feedback problem. Maybe the feedback voltages aren't quite right, so it's not actually compensating correctly. Could be that. Maybe it's too negative, not positive enough. I wonder. So I'm looking closely at the feedback circuitry in this thing, and this one here R615 which is 620 ohm on the circuit diagram it's like 619 ohms so I rounded it to the newest value anyway I was thinking about well, something to stop right in this feedback circuit so I started cross checking between the circuit diagram which has 619 ohms on it versus the parts list and the parts list says 61.9 ohms not 619 ohms so maybe there's a dot which is not showing up on the circuit diagram so I'm going to change that part out to a 62 ohms. I'll see if that changes anything. I think it probably will. It's quite a important section there. Change that resistor to the 62 ohms. Tried it again. Didn't change anything. Been playing with other stuff for the past couple of hours. Still haven't got it pinned down yet. Yeah, I'm struggling to understand what's going on here. It's a relatively simple circuit, and yet I can't seem to get it to work properly. I 
Well, they might be missing something, obviously. You figured it out eventually, but right now, this doesn't make sense. Especially when you compare what's in the manual. The troubleshooting guy for the manual mentions about doing some testing on this particular AC board, or the, obviously the HP original version, which this is based on. Even that doesn't quite seem to make sense, so... I don't know. So I'm trying to diagnose this new card I've built, trying to figure out why it's not quite working the way I want it to. So I'm just testing various parts of it to try and f determine what's going on. So I've got it turned on right now, I've got a 7 3 volt range. I'm injecting, uh, I think I'm injecting half a volt RMS into it, just to give it some kind of signal to work with. I've got two probes hooked up to my oscilloscope here, I've also got math mode turned on, which I'll show you in a second in a bit more detail, because math mode is a thing which can be really handy to use sometimes, if you don't want to do calculations in it because that's what math was. But I haven't really used it myself much before, and now I've actually gone to use it for something, and it's useful. I thought I'd demonstrate what I'm using it for, because it might be handy for you as well. What I've got here is probe 1. So channel 1 is on the output, which goes to the meter, just below, right? So 1 volt on that probe should be full scale on the meter. Channel 2 is hooked up to the output, which is output the filter. So it's before the final op-amp. So TP5 is the input to the U602 op-amp, which is doing the main drive to the meter. I was trying to check the gain of the op-amp to make sure that the gain is about right, because I'm getting quite drastic changes in meter reading. So I'm thinking that maybe there's an issue with the gain, maybe the gain's too harsh. The original gain is 5.25 or 5.22 or something like that on the original circuit diagram from HP. Now I didn't use exactly the same resistor values. My gain is about 5.3 in theory. So I'm just going to demonstrate this and just make it tweak up and you can watch the, the oscilloscope. I'll do it one from a distant view, then I'll get closer so you can get a closer view on that screen. And then I'll explain in math mode what I'm doing there, how I'm verifying the gain across a range of voltages quite easily. So if I just flick this onto one volt, this is going to shoot off scale. You'll see the scope go crazy and then settle back down again. As it settles down again, you'll be able to see all the waveforms and watch the meter come back down. All right? It goes off scale, scope's gone crazy. Bring it back to high range again, you'll see where that starts settling down and the meter will start coming back. And I'll repeat the same thing with a close-up view of the scope. And then I'll explain what I'm doing with the gain settings on this thing to work out automatically what the gain is of the op-amp. Very simple really. Okay, that's settled down, let's change views. So here's a close-up view, and I'll do exactly the same thing again, so you can see a really good close-up view of the scope. You see I've got some automatic measurements going on here. I've got channel 1 here, with peak-to-peak, -peak, RMS, minimum and maximum. I've got the same across all three of these sections. So I've got two measurements on actual channels. And one of them is F1, which is the math channel. Okay, So you can ignore basically these other measurements, but if you look at the RMS here of the math, this one here is actually telling us what the gain is. I'll explain that in a second. So I'll flick it up again, get it on settle, and bring it back down again. So you can see all these readings here. Shout out who's going off range. But watch these ratios and stuff here. As it comes back into range, you see that's now accurate. So it's about 5.3 or so on the gain. It's a bit noisy, so it's not perfect, but it's about 5.3, 5.4 which is fine, that's exactly uh, the region I wanted. It's not a huge difference in gain compared to the original circuitry. So I'm going to show you now how I got that number. So if you go up into the math functions on this particular scope, this is the SDS 2104X, well actually it's not a 2104 anymore, but we won't go there. So menu, and function, I'm doing channel 1 divided by channel 2. Right? So you can do all these different functions in here, and source A, source B, I've got channel 1 and channel 2, and I've told you to divide them in this case. All right, so it's dividing channel 1 by channel 2, therefore it gives you a ratio. Dead easy. So that's then doing that math function, which would normally display as a trace. So that's, that's what's doing here, that trace there is showing the difference between them, and it's heavily amplified. Right, the ratios I've got here, channel 1 is at 500 millivolts per division, channel 2 is at 50 millivolts per division. The math channel, 2 per division. That's why it's really noisy and just messy you got now. I'll do a finer detail in a minute and actually explain it a bit better. And then I've put the uh, measure functions to you do that channel. I've gone through these and I've just selected the math function and choose different channels and what have you. I thought I chose math on there, chose that one, All right? And then I chose what I wanted to display, and I just did the same ones because it's just easy. 
RMS is the actual difference value, that's the actual ratio there. So that's how I got it to display the actual ratio just there. Obviously I didn't need to put these ones in but I just chose it because, you know, why not? Might have told me some more information. So now I'm just going to wind this up manually to cause it to start to get a reading. I'm actually adjusting one of the adjustments inside so the needle starts moving. So we're getting a reading. All right, I'll try and get about half scale or so. It's a bit tricky to get there because it's a heating system, so it's got a bit of lag in there. Try and get it at half scale, but it will drift slightly as I'm doing this. Okay, that's sitting at half scale right now. So half scale, we're getting 510 millivolts. Half scale, which is pretty close, right? It should be getting about 500 millivolts. And we're getting 91 millivolts here out of the filter system. So it's before the op-amp. So that's giving us a gain of 5.5 right now. So it's, again, slightly higher than I wanted. Not too bad. It's close enough. So the op-amp itself is working fine. And its gain is working correctly. Now, one thing I want to show you is all this noise on here. Now, if I turn this inspection lamp on, see the noise just go crazy. Really noisy just from turning on this light. Turn it off again. There you go. Gets a lot better. Which makes it hard sometimes to do video and working on things when you turn the lights on and it messes up your readings. So I'm going to wind this up some more now, go to full scale by adjusting this trimmer. I'm just going to do it really slowly because it will kind of take off. That's now 0.6. It's 0.7. It's 0.8. You can see the gain is getting better. 5.4, it's fairly linear. About 0.9 now. Approaching full scale, and it's now full scale now. Yes, yeah, it's probably going to back off again, but that's now doing full scale. The channel two here is slightly off, it springs up slightly, so it's not going off the bottom. We're getting a gain of 5.36 at full scale, which again isn't too far from what I was thinking. It's only 0 0.1, 0 0.2 higher gain than I expected, well, than the original design. I mean, the op amp's definitely working, it's linear, so that's not that problem. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out why this is not behaving quite right. So what we're adjusting in those changes there is R626, which is one of the feedbacks. That's actually what I'm, what I'm adjusting to change the scaling. But this isn't right, okay? So I'm doing jetting right now, about half a volt RMS. So if I wind that down, put it on channel 1, it's just going to go off scale. And it's just completely shot over and if I turn it all the way down it still doesn't come right so there's something wrong here where it's not quite balancing out nicely haven't figured out what it is yet but it's a post illumination I know this op amp here is working correctly that gain looks about right I mean if I did reduce the gain it'd probably still be okay but the gain is based upon what's coming out the filter and the filter looks about right um, it will go slightly higher than obviously but I think the most it will go is about 1.6 volts so I probably could drop the gain down slightly Still working on it. So it looks like after much messing around, I've finally figured out what the problem was and I've solved it. It looks like it's working properly now. So my design does actually work. You know, I've basically copied the HP design and just tweaked it slightly a couple of places. But yeah, my board is working. So one volt coming in. As you can see, this is RMS coming in from my signal generator running at 400 hertz. We're getting one volt on the scale here. And if I drop the signal level down, so we're about 450 there now, and we get about 450 on the scale. Look at that. Working. Bring it down a bit more. Now my temp scale on this thing is like the region where it doesn't work too well, so let's do 200 millivolts. And there we go, 200 millivolts. So one temp scale is like normal for these to be pretty useless. Let's see how close we can actually get to it. Let's get 106, and we're getting just over 100 there. So yeah, that's right on the bottom end. And 71 is just below 100, so that's where it gets useless. So yeah, that's at least working. It's linear. I'm happy with that, the board is actually working, so I'm thrilled. This thing is fixed because of the board I've designed. This original board which I designed has got some errors on it, a couple of errors. A couple of improvements I've made on it as well. I've actually got a labelling error here as well. I've got these labelled wrong. Um, so I've got a couple of things which aren't quite right on it, but I've already fixed those on design. I'm going to make it available to everyone. So if you want to make this board, you can do it yourself. It's using common components. It's easy to get. So you could easily replace this board. I'm going to make this available to everyone.
no charge, just help yourself, give me credit or something, link to my YouTube channel, link to this video series or something like that. I'll be happy with that, right? 3.15. Lines up. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, you're going to be wondering what the problem was, aren't you? What was wrong with it? What caused me all this trouble was trying to get this thing working? Would you believe I had a short circuit on the board? I will actually show you where it was too. Let's turn this off. I'll pull the board out and I'll show you. Tiniest little mark. And it was shorting out the output. So the actual feedback wasn't working. So it's getting the input signal from the front panel going through the op amp. But it's supposed to have a feedback circuit which controls the thermocouples to close the loop for the op amp, right? So the op amp knows what it's doing, you know, the op amp is a closed loop, right? It's a loop circuit, so the loop from the output from the op amp, from the chopper op amp, I should be more specific, goes through the thermocouples, which is then converted to heat, sensed as a DC voltage, fed back to the other thermocouple as a negative offset, so it's compensating, and then comes back out as DC to feed back into the op amp, right? So it's that loop circuit, and that wasn't working. I was trying to figure out why I was getting no voltage on the test points again why do I have no voltage there and uh, yeah it's because I had a short circuit let me show you where it was so here's the rear of the board right here's an array of tantalum capacitors which is that main DC filtering and I've got a track that comes up the edge of here and it's a bit close and it turns out that I actually somehow must have just had a little scratch on this tracy or something and taken a solder mask off maybe when I was soldering this or I don't know when I've done something I must have been rubbing it the soldering iron maybe and I bridged right there. There was a tiny little bridge right there. And it looked like it was just a component lead hanging over very slightly well. I cut it off and it didn't look like anything. And um, even here's looking a bit close. So what I've actually done on the revised design is I've actually moved these capacitors over slightly. So I've created a bigger gap between this trace and the capacitors that can't happen again to anybody else. Right? But it's had a short circuit right there. And that track comes out to pin 10, which is the main heating element on the feedback thermocouple. Right, so that's the feedback path, and that's shorted out. So this was always zero volts. No matter what I did, that was all shorted to the ground. And I was adjusting this trim up here, thinking, why is the trim not doing anything? And I was, that's what I couldn't understand, is why I was adjusting stuff and it wasn't working. And then when I actually went digging in deeper and checking voltages, um, I found that the output voltage here, although I had the test point voltage, which was working, the output voltage here wasn't working. So up here we got TP4, just there. Right, that's the upper from the chopper op amp here, and that we will measure, you know, the ratio of voltage. I should actually measure it and actually make some notes about the actual voltages that come out of these things for future reference. But it's a negative voltage, you know, in the volts range. So I think it's up to about five volts or so maximum at TP4, negative five volts. Around about, I haven't actually measured it, but I think that's about that's what it is. I was getting voltage there. It's like, well, that's good. There's nothing wrong. The chopper's working. Why is it not working properly? And then I tested the actual pin 10 connections in the voltage connector and found it was sitting at zero volts. It's like, well, I've got a voltage here, nothing here. So I go, oh, no, I've got a bad trimmer. So I then measured the trimmer. And as I was winding the trimmer out, this voltage here was dropping. Because <laughs> there's a voltage divider effectively on the back here with the second resistor just here. So I was actually measuring on this point just here, on the wiper of the trimmer, that's the wiper. And as I was winding up and down, the voltage is dropping down. So why is the voltage dropping? It should be a pretty much constant just here. Turns out this is acting like a voltage divider because that is at zero volt down here. Anyway, once I figured that out, I was on my way. But I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out what was going on with this thing. I wasted too much time figuring out what was going on with this thing. And uh, I finally solved it. So I'm happy about that. So the other thing I've actually done on the revised design, which I actually allowed for over in this area anyway, I actually allowed space for it. But in the revised design, I've actually put a hole in the board here as well, and that's to allow for a standoff. So you can actually put a standoff on this board and mount it up to the original standoff hole through here. Right, you've got that post that used to be through there with the original mount. Uh, so it used to mount onto the, the aluminium block there, right? That would be standing off and screwed to that. So I've actually tried to position this so that there's a hole on this board where that hole is supposed to be. So you can put a standoff on the board and actually bolt the board in properly instead of just having it floating in the socket like I've got. And I didn't actually allow space to drill a hole in the board to actually put a standoff in there. That's why I've got that big gap around everything. Well, I'll show you this one. Right, so that's why I've got this big gap here because I knew I was going to have to put a standoff in this area here somewhere. You know, there's nothing on the back as well. That's the reason I did that blank space there. So I could just drill a hole through and put a standoff on. Because what I've done this one here is I've actually put a little um, rubber foot on the back here. 
so it can't touch against the transformer here. So it's not going to short out. Ideally, you would put a standoff in there and bolt it in. So I've allowed for that new design. Right. If you like that, give us a thumbs up. Definitely give me a thumbs up. Share the video if you want other people to know how to fix their HP 3400As and share them my PCB design. Should be on PCB Bay, right? This is on PCB Bay. I've got my projects page on here, so anything which I'm sharing publicly and making open source is on my PCB Bay projects page, which will be linked down below in the description, right? So open the, the description out, click on the show more and you'll be a thing there. I think it's also linked to my main website as well, my thedefpom.com. I think it's linked on there as well. I probably should have my PCWay page linked on there. I probably should do that. I don't think it is, actually. Yes, yeah, so I share it. Get my PCB design. It won't take long to build it. I mean, I may be an hour to build the board. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the bell icon if you've not got that done already. Patreon support link over there if you want to join the channel. Help me to buy things like this to fix. Bye.